In today's episode, I get to interview the amazing Don No. Don is a registered dietitian, nutritionist, certified diabetes care and education specialist, an amazing cook, an amazing person making a difference in the world of diabetic education. So stay tuned. I'm so excited you're here. This episode of the Happy Diabetic Kitchen Podcast is sponsored by my diabetes supplier, U.S. Med. U.S. Med offers free shipping and a 90-day supply with every order. To see how they can simplify your diabetes care, call 1-877-840-8218. I did, and I can feel the love. Remember, there is a much better solution, U.S. Med. everyone, welcome to the Happy Diabetic Kitchen. I am your host, Chef Robert Lewis, the Happy Diabetic, and this is the internet's most delicious cooking podcast. I'm here in the kitchen, getting ready to explore a healthy diabetic lifestyle. I wanna take the mystery out of healthy cooking and explore some amazing foods and my diabetic journey with all my successes and all my challenges. So let me help you live your best happy diabetic lifestyle. So welcome to the kitchen. And if you're new to the show, I am so happy you're here today. Again, welcome. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Happy Diabetic Kitchen Podcast. I am your host, Chef Robert Lewis. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We've got an amazing show today. Totally epic, I'm sure. We've got the amazing Don No registered dietitian nutritionist certified diabetic care specialist education specialist an amazing person making a difference in so many ways in the diabetic world certainly she's made a difference in my life just speaking with her during this podcast i will also share with you my tips where i went to chef school the culinary institute of america in hyde park new york i'm going to share a tip that i learned while going to school there and so much more so what can I say? Happy you're here. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Let's talk about my tip from the Culinary Institute of America that I learned while going to chef school there. Did you know food continues to cook after it leaves the stove or the oven? It absolutely does. Do you ever wonder why your eggs turn out rubbery or your steaks seem overdone? Well, chefs know that you should always let food rest and also food has some carryover cooking, which will happen after you take it off. So my tip is to slightly undercook things, slightly, to give it that extra carryover cooking from when you remove it from the stove or the oven. So to avoid rubbery eggs or other hazards of overcooking, which happens to me sometimes, let's just be honest, I want to undercook ever so slightly. It's also important if you're waiting for another ingredient to finish up or try to keep things warm for a while. Veggies taste better a little underdone, a little crispy, right? Pasta, a little better, al dente, to the bite. So here's my tip. Pull things off the stove a little ahead of time to avoid overcooking or even to get soggy. Okay, and lastly, quick tip about seasoning. Do not over-season. Chefs like me know a little secret. So I'm going to kind of whisper it because I don't want people to really hear. People who love to season their food, in fact, some restaurant patrons reach for the salt and pepper before they even have a chance to taste the meal. I know, you've seen it. It might even be you. Well, if the meal was already veering on salty or spicy, it might get pushed to the edge. I mean, the challenge is that because raw meat and other uncooked ingredients can't really be sampled very easily before cooking, it's sometimes hard to know. So my key, and I tell all my culinary students this the same, I tell them you can always add more, but you can't take it away. So season in layers, season as you go, and taste often. Taste it, season it, taste it, adjust the seasoning. 
And then at the very end, before you're ready to serve, give it one more tasty taste. Make sure it's seasoned really well with whatever seasonings you love. Salt, pepper, garlic, oregano, and you're ready to go. All right, everybody, that's my tip from the Culinary Institute of America where I went to chef school, listen, a long time ago. But that's okay. Cooking stays with you forever. All right, everybody, we'll be right back with the amazing Don No. nutritionist, consultant, speaker, and nutrition coach, and a certified diabetes care and education specialist. Don, welcome to the podcast. I have to ask you, are you ready to get happy? I'm ready. Awesome. <laughs> um, I want to read something that I found on your website that I thought was a really appropriate, and I'm just going to read it for everyone to listen. So it, it basically says, well, it does say this, my approach to food and nutrition is that food is both fuel and delicious. I love that we can nourish our body and enjoy meals and celebrations at the same time. Some of my favorite foods include mushrooms, and you referenced the Julia Child method, which I think we need to hear more about, Brussels sprouts, beets, meatballs, pizza. Yes, I eat pizza, and anything with pumpkin and sage. I love finding ways to make the most nutritious versions of a favorite comfort food so that choosing the healthy option becomes an easy and tasty choice. Don, welcome to the Happy Diabetic Kitchen. I'm so happy that you're here. Oh, thank you so much. I am so happy to have this conversation with you. Me too. Well, Don, why don't you tell the Happy Diabetics out there listening a little more about you and you know maybe what your mission is and what you do or anything you think might be important. Sure. Well, I love that you uh, found that on my website because sometimes I, I forget that I wrote that. <laughs> so I would say that that is a pretty good description um, that I'm, I consider myself kind of a, a foodie food. I, I love eating food. And it happened to be that when I was, you know, in school, my, my freshman year of school, I was interested in healthcare. And my mom ended up being di diagnosed with type 2 diabetes my freshman year of college. And that really just shaped it shaped my path truly because I, I took a nutrition class around the same time and I was watching my mom live and breathe uh, nutrition at home as she was navigating carbohydrate foods. And I remember coming home for Thanksgiving and my mom was counting carbohydrates at our, at our Thanksgiving. <laughs> and uh, I really got to see the intersection of when you m marry food with health. And, and it was, I'm lucky, I think, that I got to see that so early in my career, because now as a seasoned professional, I realize that not everyone has the same experience that she did. They didn't all get a dietitian visit right away where mm -hmm. they got to go home and implement right away. <laughs> so it, it's just, it's been evolution for me, but I, I would say that I, that, that is a great description of, uh, I really love food but I also love what food can do for us and how it can help us. And so that's um, that's kind of how I approach my work. Me too. I think we have a lot in common. So Don, you've been doing this for how long? About 20 years. I can't believe it's, wow. it is that, that long, but it's been about 20 years. <laughs> can you tell us about something that, or a situation where you were super successful and felt really good about you know, something that you were working on? Sure. Uh, well, I can tell you that I, a little bit of my story uh, from my, my career path is that I started out teaching what I would say would be the traditional diabetes teaching methods where I, I taught, mm -hmm. I taught people with diabetes um, about carbohydrate foods. And we talked a lot about portions and I definitely Gosh, I hate to say this out loud, but it's my real story. I, you know, I kind of just did what everybody told me to do. And my, um, you know, when you're mentored by others, that's what you do when you're young in your career. Mm -hmm. And so I, I did what everybody was doing. 
And I went to, I remember in 2011, I went to a conference and I had a dietitian speak on, I heard a dietitian speak on how we approach diabetes and why we tell people to eat a certain amount of carbs every day. And when I heard her say, there is no evidence to support this, it was mind blowing to me. <laughs> mm. um, and I thought, well, what do you mean there's no evidence to support this? This is the way we've been teaching people for the last, you know, how many years? There's, what do you mean there's no evidence? So that was my first seed that was planted in that, mm -hmm. you know, maybe there's some other ways to do things. And then about a year later, I ended up working in a healthcare center where we had a fairly large, robust weight management clinic. And so when you ask me about what I'm proud of, I'm really proud that I worked in this weight management clinic where I helped shape the nutrition program because I would say across the country in most medical weight management programs, there is a lot of emphasis on medications, but very little emphasis on the actual nutrition plan. Um, so mm -hmm. my colleagues and I, we developed three different styles of eating plans because there we, we know that one doesn't fit all. And we were able to create what I'm going to say, like guidebooks or materials, what you might classically see in a, in a healthcare setting is a, like a one page handout, you know, so someone's newly diagnosed with diabetes and they're given like a one page handout. <laughs> I got it. I got that same. I got it. It was given to me. Yeah. <laughs> and what we did, um, and I can't just say it was just me because it was my colleagues with me, but what we did is we took what people really needed. Um, they mm -hmm. asked us for, you know, can you tell me like a sample day? Or can you give me a sample like food products? Can you tell me like what to go buy? Because I, th I think you mentioned in our, our, our previous conversation that you had a, a dietitian walk you through a grocery store. And that's what we did. We, we helped people. We gave grocery lists. And so anyways, the long story short is that we really created these very comprehensive nutrition information to, to guide people, you know, if they were at a place in life where they weren't doing any cooking at all, we could still help them meet the, the, a plan that would be helpful for them moving forward. So I would say that was one of my most proud moments that I worked, that I worked alongside dietitians that thought a little differently than, than everybody else. And we created materials that I'd never seen at any other type of facility. It was a very comprehensive program um, that people could really like take home and do with, with, wherever they were from a starting point. Uh, when I was newly diagnosed, I wish I had something like that because I was given the one sheet, read this. And, you know, it was, I, I didn't really understand it. And I think there's a lot of people that don't really understand how to live healthy and happy with diabetes. You know, yeah. it's not a death sentence. You can manage it. It can work for you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Don, Let's talk about food and eating and you, for example, what's your earliest food memories? I mean, maybe tell us about the food or the dishes and maybe the people that prepared it that really, you know, resonate in your, in your mind. Oh, sure. Um, you know, I, I do, I definitely identify as a foodie. So I, I started to think, gosh, what are my earliest memories? For sure, my my I definitely have an influence, an Italian influence in my family. My my dad's mom was was from Italy, and I'm sorry, yeah, my dad's mom was from Italy, and so my mom learned how to make her her sauce. So mm -hmm. we we often had spaghetti and meatballs as like our birthday dinners. Um, so that would be a, a very comfort food for me. And then a like super early memory. Um, I am a very lucky human that my mother was incredible and that she would make us breakfast in bed on our birthdays so wow. a, a big a big memory for me was having blueberry pancakes on on my birthday for breakfast in bed <laughs> that is awesome my daughter and her husband do that same tradition with their children oh that's so neat it's so yeah, neat. It's I have yet to do it I will say I am uh, um I have two two littles at home and I'm I'm still thinking, do I want to start that? <laughs> yeah, you do. I think you do. <laughs> so, Don, in your mind, what do you think the biggest challenge diabetics face regarding eating today? That's a really tough question. I, I've really been reflecting on what what do I think is, is challenge. There, there are lots of challenges, and I don't want to, you know, put one over the other. But I think what I really see, and I'm really um, very active in the online community, and I'm in a lot of um, diabetes Facebook groups. And I would say the, the thing that I continue to see as, as a challenge is people are newly diagnosed with diabetes 
and sent home with very little information. And that's uh, especially around food and nutrition, um, really almost on, on most topics related to diabetes, but especially on food and nutrition. And often given, mm -hmm. I would say, strange advice, like you can't eat anything white, you know, <laughs> something like that. And so I, I see people turning to, to Facebook groups for, you know, what do I do now? And I love that we have this ability to connect with other people in this way, because there is so much support in the online diabetes mm -hmm. community um, for that. But I also feel like we have so much, we have a lot, we have a lot of improvements to make so that people don't leave so frustrated and that they get connected with a diabetes care and education specialist sooner that can really support right. them with all the questions. That right. they have. I mean, I love my GP and I, and I also have an endocrinologist, but you know, my, my general doctor just, I don't think he had, I love him. So don't, don't take this wrong. I just don't think he had a lot of nutrition experience in yeah. medical school. Yeah. And so, you know, people can walk away with listening to your doctor and taking it verbatim when really, you know, you have to be your best advocate in my mind, which is why I think finding somebody like you who is a certified diabetic care and education specialist and is a dietitian and, and knows all about that, that would be my next call if I were newly diagnosed. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't my first call, but I wish it would have been. And that's that's the hard part, right? Is is that you don't even know to that that's an, a service that exists. Um, right. So it is it is a challenge, and I love that you found. I think you said you found a dietitian kind of by happenstance. Yes. <laughs> Which is so yes. so neat. Yeah, it was neat. So Don, do you like to cook? So I do like to cook, and I knew you were going to ask me this question because you're a chef, <laughs> and. I will tell you, I wanted to be completely honest and transparent that I spent so much of my career working away from home. And mm. I think this makes me probably relatable to a lot of people <laughs> in that while I do like to cook, I have not been the primary cook or chef at home um, because I always worked farther away from home. And, and yeah. to be honest, now that's not the case. Uh, I actually do work from home, which I, I love, and I'm taking the opportunity to cook more. But I do find it to be, um, you asked about the challenges that people with diabetes face. I think this is one of them. Um, you know, yeah. I was I was a healthcare professional teaching and preaching food all day long, and I wasn't the one at home preparing food. Now, I was doing a lot of... Um, meal planning. And I still do because that's obviously in my wheelhouse to think about what we're going to eat and what groceries to buy and what we need. Um, but my husband is the creative one. He's the, wow. he likes to play in the kitchen. So I post a lot of food pictures and a lot of people probably think it's me, but my, if you see something really extravagant, it's my husband do it. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Does he have a favorite food? Like he likes to cook. Is there like a dish that he like goes after? You know, I think that's a good question. I'm going to have to ask him. I think if I were to ask him, he would probably say that he really likes to recreate. Like he likes to go, we, if we would go out to a restaurant, he would, his like challenge is to mm. come home and try to recreate certain dishes or tastes. Yeah. Um, so that I'm going to have to think on that one. If, if he has a favorite, I can answer my yeah. favorite foods, but I have to think. Yeah. About <laughs> well, well, what is your favorite food? Oh man. You know, I have to come back to, to the mushrooms that we talked about. I really love, I really do love mushrooms. Uh, I know they're not everybody does. And they're, some people think they taste like dirt, but I love the, I love that savory taste that they bring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Julia Child method is, is a method where they, you kind of leave the, you leave, you do some butter, you saute with butter but you let kind of leave the mushrooms alone. You don't really do anything to them while they are soaking up all the butter and they just mm. are so tasty. You think that you need to add butter in the pan because there's no butter left, but you don't because the butter wow. is all in the mushrooms. <laughs> I'm going to post that recipe in the show notes so everyone can look at it. And I can't wait to try them. I'm going to give that a try this week. I breezed over the recipe on that because you haven't linked up. And yeah. I thought that looked really, really amazing. And I got to add one more. Yeah, go ahead. I am a big pizza fan. I think I told you Italian. I love pizza too. <laughs> and I don't really know anybody who, I really don't know too many people who don't love pizza, whether you're Italian background or yeah. not. Um, 
and, and it's such a, like my husband grew up with pizza night every Friday night at home. You know, I, I don't know if that's a every home tradition, but that was, that was big for us when we were, were growing up. Um, so having pizza options or any traditional food, if your food isn't, isn't pizza, I would say that's like my biggest thing to empower people with diabetes is, is that you can find a way to make that taste. Um, my, one of my favorite things that we do is, is we make a, um, pizza on a, a spaghetti squash crust and it's what? just awesome. <laughs> what? I'm, I'm trying to like kind of figure crazy. out yeah, how, how would that happen? Well, I will tell you, it is not. So if you've had a pizza on a cauliflower crust, it is very similar to that. So it's okay. not the same, it's not the same exact thing. So I, I don't want to mislead people that they think it's the same. But I really have enjoyed eating pizza this way. And I'm not lying. I'm not just like saying this. I actually prefer to have pizza this way because I get the flavors I want. I can eat the amount I want. And I feel good afterwards. And that's kind of that combo of, you know, food is fuel and fuels our bodies, but it's also fun and, you know, meets that kind of yeah. need. Um, I'm not saying everyone has to do it this way. It's just how I kind of prefer to do things now. <laughs> wow. I love spaghetti squash. Maybe you'll share the recipe. I would love I to try to do it. I can. I will share. I will share it with you. I will tell. I always tell people when they ask me for it that it's. Um, if you've seen recipes for cauliflower pizza crust online, it's very similar in that you you cook it and you squeeze out all the water, and we actually do let it kind of the water drain it a day overnight in the fridge. So it's a little bit of a labor of love. Um, yeah. So not the most convenient way to do things, and not the and even for us when we're, life is busy, not something we do every week. But certainly, if I had all the time in the world, that would be my preference on how to do awesome. it. Awesome. Awesome. Don, have you ever had a diabetic aha moment? Like, has there been a time in your career where you thought, oh, okay. A couple. <laughs> okay. We would love to know what they are. A couple. Yeah. So um, I think I kind of alluded earlier to, you know, I used to teach that people had to eat a certain amount of carbohydrate every day. And um when I started working in this medical weight loss clinic, um, it happened to be housed in a diabetes center. So I was doing these weight, weight management programs as well as working with people with, with diabetes. And this woman came to our clinic. She drove about four hours to come see us. And when she came to see us, she was on an insulin pump and she was using over 200 units of insulin a day. Um, and to be quite honest, her blood sugars were, were doing fared really well. She wore a continuous glucose monitor. She had an insulin pump. On paper, her, her blood sugars looked great, but she would tell you that her quality of life was, was not so great. She was having trouble um, just kind of doing daily activities, you know, was very fatigued all the time. Um, so fast forward to she, she decided she wanted to enter one of our weight management programs. And she was influenced a little bit by the physician because one of the doctors I worked with liked to get people going right away. So he mm. encouraged them to do one of our, our meal replacement programs, which goes back to those materials that I helped create for people. Mm -hmm. And so this woman, she listened to the doctor and she, for two weeks before her visit with me, she followed um, a, a, like a protein shake style eating plan twice a day, plus a one regular meal at dinner. And she had lost, I don't even remember, maybe 10 pounds by the time she saw me. And she was thrilled about it. And she was so excited that she wanted to keep eating that way. Uh, and so I was sharing with her all of our different eat programs and, and eating mm -hmm. patterns that we were offering. And long story, we, she ended up wanting the lower carbohydrate eating plan. So she used a combination of both meal replacement and lower carb style of eating for her main meal. And in about six months, she was completely off of her insulin pump. Um, we had, we had, were able to change all of her medications. Uh, she was not on insulin, I think at all anymore. And if I fast forward to, I have to remember the timeline, but to about maybe nine months, um, nine months to 12 months, she was, she had lost about 40% of her body weight. Wow. And that was the first time I saw in person, um, type two diabetes remission. 
uh, it, she was not yet off all of her medications, but she was on her way to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, and she had achieved a weight loss similar to what we see with weight loss surgery. Wow. And from a clinical side of things, I had just never seen that. I had never, I, I never thought it was possible. I had never attempted it with anyone. <laughs> I didn't know that this was something that could be done. Um, so that was an aha moment in that it, it showed me what was possible with certain tools um, that we could use. Now, I will tell you this person was also incredibly empowered to do it this way. Hmm. So I don't do this with everybody I meet. (laughs) And in fact, I try not to do it without a whole medical team being on board because there was a lot of medication adjustments that happened along the way. And she Hmm. was definitely at risk for low blood sugars being on insulin. Um, But what was really fascinating to me, it was an aha moment in, in clinical care. And that was years before we had studies showing that type 2 diabetes remission is possible. Hmm. Um, so that was an, one aha moment for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a big um, one. It was a big one. And, and yeah. so she was so thrilled that she told her doctor about it. And then her doctor started sending every person that they saw to our clinic. Every person that she sent did not have um, the same results because not every person was that person right they they weren't that not everybody wanted to do it the way she wanted to do it so so that was was also a lesson in it um yes it's possible but it's not necessarily for everybody um i would say my second one is almost the exact opposite experience and to be quite honest these two aha moments are probably what have really shaped how i approach my Mm -hmm. my coaching today um the second one is i had a a dietitian who specialized in eating disorders um, come come work on our team with us. And that was so enlightening because I did not realize how much um, stigma and diet culture uh, was face was really facing people with diabetes. Um, it's kind of wild to me that I didn't realize it because my mom, who lives with type 2 diabetes, had had struggled with her weight probably her entire life and had been put on what I'm going to call crash diets since she was maybe 10 years old. So, But I didn't know my mom when she was 10 years old, right? So I didn't right, right. get that side of things. Uh, but it really was incredible to work alongside someone who specialized in um, in disordered eating patterns and, and bringing awareness to the language that we use. I think I've heard you say you... Um, well, I don't know if it was you or, or somebody on your podcast that they don't use the word diet. Um, it has. Uh, I never use that word. No, I don't mm-hmm. either. Um, and right. I'm I'm so, so grateful that I got to have the aha moment because what I realized was my colleague who taught differently than me, we actually had the same message, but she used different language. Hmm. And when I started to use the language that she used, and I started to speak more in an empowering method that also not only empowered the person sitting in front of me, but took into account their history with food Mm -hmm. and nutrition, their experiences, um, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, So yes, I know that people can use meal replacement and low-carb nutrition, but if it's at a cost to their mental health or they feel a lot of guilt or shame, then those are tools I don't use until we work on the mindset and releasing any guilt or shame around food and nutrition. Mm. Um, this, it's, I hope this is making sense, but it was these, it, this concept of these were my two aha moments. <laughs> it makes total sense. And, and there is some shaming about food involved with people who are living with diabetes. And what a horrible thing to be shamed about. Right. You know, I mean, food should be part of your life and fun and, and enjoyment and excitement and cooking and creating. And um, yeah, um, Don, let me ask you this question. Something that's happening a lot to me lately is I'm meeting a lot of people who are telling me that they've been, I don't know if diagnosed is the right word, but they've been identified as having pre-diabetes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, se- it seems like more than ever, physicians are really focusing on that pre-diabetic. Um, can you just enlighten me and, 
and our audience today about really what what does that mean exactly? Sure, absolutely. Um, so pre-diabetes is is an official diagnosis. It is um, back long time ago. <laughs> uh, I used to kind of tell people pre-diabetes was like being pre-pregnant. <laughs> you either are or you aren't. <laughs> I said the same exact thing. You either I. I'm not kidding you. I've said exactly the same thing. It's like being pregnant, either you are or you're not, um, you know, yeah, that, that's. But when we learn more, we can do differently. And so um, the reason that you're hearing a lot about this is that the A1C did not use to diagnose prior to, I think, 2011. Um, we only use the A1C to monitor diabetes. Now we use the A1C to diagnose diabetes and pre-diabetes. So because we are using the A1C more proactively and preventatively, we can diagnose um, pre-diabetes, which officially is uh, from the A1C, is an A1C of 5.7 to an A1C of 6.4. So if you're somewhere between a 5.7 and a 6.4, um, that is, is how the A1C can diagnose prediabetes. We can also diagnose it based on um, fasting blood work uh, with fasting blood sugar. Mm -hmm. But I, I kind of yeah. like to use the A1C because the A1C en encompasses all the blood sugars versus just a one number. Right. Yes. Um, so, so the good news is we're being a little bit more proactive and trying to catch type 2 diabetes um, or any diabetes, truly. We're trying to catch it before we see those blood sugars really skyrocket. Um, mm -hmm. When we have that di pre-diabetes diagnosis, we actually do have a, a study um, called the Diabetes Prevention Program that took people in that pre-diabetes range and introduced a lifestyle modification program. And with that lifestyle modification program, they got some pretty amazing results. Um, I think so much that they stopped the study early. Um, this was back in 2009. Um, where they were able to show in the diabetes prevention program that if we did the the ultimate um, bottom line is that if we saw five to seven percent weight loss i think it was actually seven percent but they sometimes you see five to seven percent um five to seven percent weight loss plus 30 minutes of physical activity five days a week or the equivalent of 150 minutes a week but if you break it down, it's 30 minutes, five days, 20 minutes, seven days. Um, those two combinations were able to prevent diabetes 60% of the time. Um, so we were able to see people not progress to type 2 diabetes um, wh when we do that type of lifestyle intervention. Hmm. And, and it sounds like the same, in, in my mind, the same type of formula for someone who gets diagnosed as having diabetes. Yes. You know, yeah. work on the weight loss, do some exercise. Yep. Take your medicines when you're supposed to, if you ha if you are on some medicines. Exactly. Yep. So it but yeah. here's the beauty of it. And I think we didn't we didn't touch on this yet, but I think it's important. What they did differently is they actually did the real the real life work in this program. So it was a, a weekly program. They met with the participants every week, I think for 12 weeks. Um, mm. now when you talk about being diagnosed with type two diabetes and the recommendations are the same, you don't get to meet with your healthcare provider every week. <laughs> you right. Don't get, right. You don't, you don't come back and say, how'd it go this week? What could I work on different? How could I, um, how could I make sure I meet my goals this week? And so really what they did is they used something called a, a lifestyle coach. And that is really what makes that program so mm. unique. And I would say effective. And also why I do my coaching with my clients the way that I do. <laughs> and I really wanted to adopt a coaching model because I realized in the clinical setting, in a hospital setting where we didn't have this type of um, weekly or every other week contact, um, you know, seeing somebody two or four times a year is not really effective. Um, no. So... You know, the, the diabetes prevention program really drove what I'm going to call the, um, the, the, uh, the coaching, the, the, the concept from here's education to here's how to put that education into practice. And I think it's, that, I think you, you had described, you know, having a dietitian, you know, walk you through a grocery store. Um, and that's kind of the idea that 
that when you work with somebody more regularly, you can do that. You can talk about yeah. what, gro what groceries to get or how to, um, mm -hmm. how to, you know, meet your family's needs of pizza night. <laughs> you know, like those right. Days. Right. <laughs> because, you know, that's the real world, right? Yes. I mean, how do you, how do you navigate in the real world and stay healthy? And, and, you know, it's like I'll, I'll meet diabetics that I'll say, yeah, I've stopped eating potatoes. I said, well, don't you like potatoes? I love potatoes. Well, why aren't you eating potatoes? And then you hear this, all these reasons. And, you know, there's got to be a balance, I believe, yes. that lifestyle way of eating. Yes. Um, you yeah. nailed it. You nailed it. It's the, the idea of how does this fit into someone's lifestyle? And every single person is different, right? So somebody might right, love right. potatoes. Somebody else might really love um macaroni and cheese right <laughs> well that's me and i have people all the time i mean it's sort of been my joke but you know it's my favorite food mac and cheese it's awesome. the spaghetti and meatballs for you it's yeah. like my childhood memory and it's just something about it and oh i get such you can't eat that oh why not well you're diabetic diabetes can't eat that you know but it, it for me it it's it opens a wide door to help them understand um, how I can eat it. And, you know, it's not a death sentence. Correct. Right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. People think that sometimes food can be that way. Yep. I'm so curious, and you don't have to share if you don't want to, but do you, have you used a continuous glucose monitor before? I do. Matter of fact, um, I, I'll show you. I, I'm showing, uh, Don, I have, a, I have the Libre 2. Um, and I've had it for about six years. I think I had it soon after it came out on the market. Uh, I was at my endocrinologist and I said, what's that? Cause I'm kind of a gadget dude. I said, okay. well, what's that? And so she said, it's, it's a continuous glucose monitor. Now, you know, luckily for me, I mean, I've been very blessed. I, I've had the opportunity to work a lot with taking control of your diabetes. Are you familiar with that organization yes, yes. out of San Diego, Steve yep. Edelman? So I, I have been their chef at their public conferences for probably 12 years. Oh, that's fantastic. And so, and so because I'm there, I get to hang out with all these amazing endocrinologists yeah. and learn all about the greatest, the latest and greatest. So I couldn't wait to slap it on. But I love people to say, what's what's that on your arm? I, and I'll, I'll tell them that's my Wi-Fi hotspot. Do you need some <laughs> internet? And I'll, I'll click you in there. Um, but this CGM has made an amazing difference in my diabetic care. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the reason I bring that up is that um, if somebody is saying, I really want mac and cheese, or I really want potatoes, or I really want blah, blah, blah food, and we know it's a carbohydrate, we know it's going to raise blood sugars, this tool is what helps you figure out how to incorporate that food in a way yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. If you're listening today and you do not have a CGM, you need to find your doctor or endocrinologist and learn about it. Right now I use the Abbott Libre to full disclosure. Um, I'm an ambassador for Abbott. So I've done some work with them. I've done commercials. They're running on Hulu. People call me all the time. It's <laughs> embarrassing. But, you know, I love the product. It's really great. Um, and I think it's I think it's the future of diabetic diabetes care. It absolutely is. I, I, I would yeah. tell you my number one favorite tool for people with diabetes is obviously nutrition. My number two favorite tool is a continuous glucose monitor. Um, yeah. Maybe someday I'll switch the order. Maybe it's really going to be a continuous monitor first and then nutrition, but <laughs> right now that's yeah. why. And if, yeah. And if you're, if you're living with diabetes uh, and on Medicare, there's a way to get it. You there know? Is. Yes. And of course it, with an all disclosure, cause you know, I I'm, I'm honest, you know, this podcast is sponsored by us medical supply. And that's where I get my, all my diabetes supplies for, and they can make it super easy to get it. So if you're really worried about, oh, it sounds complicated and it's easy to get uh, with very little paperwork and it's a great, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, they are, they are, they are the future for, for living with diabetes. Um, I am a huge advocate and I could, I really can't talk about nutrition with, I don't like to talk about nutrition without having that tool 
because it's so empowering. It can be so empowering. Now, I will tell you what that aha moment of working with my um, my my friend who specialized in eating disorders. Um, you know, she also helped me realize that not everyone's going to see it this way. So if somebody mm -hmm. sees sees blood sugars and they see them going up and they have a lot of guilt and shame around that, then maybe this isn't the best tool. Um, but we work, you know, I work with my clients to help them reframe that mindset because yeah. it's the mindset is everything. How we approach it yeah. is everything. <laughs> I mean, for me, it's super empowering when I open the app on my phone and I'm in the green and I've had a great day and it just makes me want to do more of that. And it really makes me think about too, what effect will this food have on my blood sugar? And let's check it, let's test it and let's see what it does. And, you know, maybe for the next time, how can I modify that a little bit? So it's like my little laboratory that I carry around with me. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. So Don, I know that you have a number of programs that you're involved with, you know, as a consultant, as a speaker, and you want to just share a couple that you have going on and, you know. Sure, sure. So I am, um, I've really been working in the last couple of years. So I, le I left my, my clinical role um, about in 2020, and I've been really working on just building a, a private practice. So, and I'm having so much fun doing it. I was, I was going to be honest, I was nervous that I wouldn't get to work with people with diabetes because I wasn't connected to a physician's office anymore. Um, I'm like you, I love working with very talented endocrinologists that, that would teach me things every day that mm -hmm. I might not have known. Um, but, so I was a little nervous about that, but I have just been having a fantastic time. I've been, I've been meeting people um, uh, some local referrals, some uh, from the internet. And uh, I have some incredible clients and actually almost all of them have type two diabetes. <laughs> so it's been um, exciting to be able to have that contact with people with diabetes still. And it just recently I, um, I've opened a program called protein plus plants. And it is really everything that I've learned in clinical practice about the importance of making sure that people do eat enough protein because protein is so important on keeping us full. Um, it also has very minimal effect on blood sugars. And it's just one of those things that um, I find in daily life, a lot of people don't realize they don't get enough of. So it's, it's a program called Protein Plus Plants. And the plants are because you've probably heard of the Mediterranean Mediterranean eating pattern. <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. Love it. And we know how hugely beneficial that is to our health. Um, it's really just a, a com I always say the Mediterranean eating pattern is all the components of all the, the healthy foods in one place. Um, mm. Unfortunately, the Mediterranean eating pattern can sometimes be a little bit higher in carbohydrate, but it's really the super healthy carbohydrates, the high fiber ones, the ones that have tons of vitamins and minerals for us. So I really wanted to take the concept of a high, uh, uh, getting enough protein plus getting enough plants. Um, depending on the person, they might want to do that in a way that's very low carbohydrate. And I know how to support that. Or they might not want to do that in a way that's low carbohydrate. They might want to make sure that they can still eat um, you know, mac and cheese every now and then. <laughs> we figure out how to make that work. So I, it's a it's a flexible program, but it's still the same core principles that I think everybody with diabetes benefits from. Um, so it is a, a twelve week program that I I'm gonna I, I'm calling my signature program because that is really um, how I operate, and I've just been fortunate to have some incredible people come into my world to show me how to create this in an online setting. So I think I told you earlier that I I was able to do. Um, this weight management program in a clinical setting. Right, right. And I, I know for a fact that when people are in um, so a community of support, you know, that, that it, they benefit from each other. We did a lot of like in-person group sessions and in my former job. So I really created an online community to do the same thing. Um, so I'm really thrilled about it. I love it. I get, I get to do weekly coaching in it wow, and it's just wow. so much fun. Yeah. How can we find out more about this? Where can where could Where my listeners go to learn more about that? Sure. So I talk about it quite a bit on Instagram. Um, I you you could find me on my website at, at dawnnorden.com, but I'm also 
um, Dawn No RDN on Instagram. And so if you go to my Instagram, you'll see in my bio, there is actually a link where you can you can join right away if you're if you're excited about it right now. Uh, but if you'd like to just learn more about it, I'm always happy to talk with um, with any potential clients in the future. Um, I, I give so much. I give so much. Um, you know, information out. For, I don't want to say for free, but I do because I just love. I you know, as you do, I want people to be empowered, and right. I want them to know. Um, I really want them to know that they can live a long, healthy life with diabetes. Right. I also want them to know if they're newly diagnosed, there might be a chance for type two diabetes remission, and you know, that's you know, I'm going to continue to talk about that until I know any differently because because right. I I want to empower people to live really you know, the life that they want to live. Yeah. That's what I love about the diabetic community is that so many people um, are so willing to give and contribute and help people live their best life. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Awesome. Well, Don, is there anything else you want to chat about before we, cause you know, we have a game to play today I and there's, <laughs> and there's big prizes for this game. So, but before we get into that, is there anything else you just would love to tell our listeners or chat about? Oh gosh. Um, you know, we didn't, I, I briefly touched on this, but I think it might be worth, worth saying um, because it's been so powerful for, for me race recently in my life. Okay. Um, is just this concept of, of mindset. And I think it, it's just something that I didn't even know that I worked on with my clients, but I do. And I even did it back in clinical practice and I didn't realize what I was doing when I was doing it. Um, but a big piece of, of us being able to do something different or something new or something hard is really how we think about it. Um, so a lot of the work that I do with my clients is looking at the mindset and the approach and sometimes helping people reframe their, their thought pattern. Um, I had one of my clients recently tell me, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember her words because they were so impactful on me. I think she's, she described, she doesn't have bad diabetes, the bad diabetes. And I was trying, I was trying to figure out like, what is she, I, I had to ask her, say, what do you mean by that? And what she was describing was really a person with diabetes who didn't know that they could live a healthy life with diabetes. Mm. And when I reframed it to her in that, did you know that, you know, I really want you to, that person you're describing, could you send them my way? Because <laughs> I want them to know that they don't have to live like that. <laughs> That's right. Oh, wow. And and she was, she was truly describing someone in her life. Um, yeah. So I, I, I think the mindset piece. Um, and that for her was really big because she realized, oh, my future doesn't have to look like that. And I said, no, no, it doesn't. Mm. <laughs> and it really shifted. It really shifted her, that attitude or that, that mindset reframe really shifted into how she's now taking care of herself. It's a, it was, it's incredible to me what I've seen her do in the last month. And prior to that conversation. So that's a really big piece I think is so important. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. I know for me personally, and I, I can remember about when it was, but I know for me, I had to change my mindset about diabetes. And when I started to take ownership and not feeling so bad for myself and beat myself up, things started to change for me. I mean, yeah. I started to just do better. And I, I had a whole... You know, Robert, you you this is this is your disease, and you got to suck it up, and you got to figure it out. And you know, I try to find the positive aspects of, like you know, I I know that I, I I'm sure I'll misquote this, Don, but um, uh, Steve Edelman would say, if you ever want to get healthy, get a good disease, because it almost helps you focus on your health and yeah. look at your health in a way that you wouldn't otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a great way to say yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Don, will you come back again on on this podcast? We would love to have you back. I would love to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This has been great having you here. Well, um, thank you again. Appreciate it. I will post all your links and all your contact information in the show notes. And um, when we come back, we're going to play the rapid fire 
411 round of love. Are you going to be ready for that? I think Big so. Big prizes. <laughs> Can't wait. All right. Stay tuned, everybody. We will be right back. Okay, everybody, welcome back. We're about to have a little fun with the Rapid Fire 411 round. Are you ready to play? I'm ready. Let's do it. So I'm going to ask you a series of rapid fire questions and you'll simply choose your preference. For example, butter or olive oil, riding a bike, hiking, that kind of thing. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Let's do it. Here we go. <laughs> olive oil or coconut oil? Olive oil. Grapes or pomegranate? Pomegranate. Waffles or pancakes? Pancakes. Grilled chicken or grilled fish? Uh, grilled chicken. Chunky or smooth peanut butter? Smooth. Smooth. Wow. Okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm chunky. It's a big deal here at our house. Uh, <laughs> it's a big controversy for sure. <laughs> Um, well, we have both, if that matters. <laughs> we have both, too. It does matter. <laughs> okay, Valentine's Day or St. Patrick's Day? Valentine's Day. Okay. Brussels sprouts or green beans? Brussels sprouts. Bacon or ice cream? Ah. Ice cream. Or bacon ice cream? I've had both. <laughs> okay. Sounds great. I would say the... the the person I was before I had children would have said bacon. And then oh. after pregnancy, it's all about the ice cream. <laughs> okay, I get it. I get it. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Okay, me too. Superhero or supervillain? Superhero. Roller coasters or merry-go-round? Oh, roller coasters. Yeah, merry-go-round for me all the way. <laughs> okay, Don, finally, if you could break bread with anyone past or present who would it be oprah you're the second person who said oprah that's amazing tell me why oprah oh my goodness what an incredible woman who from what i understand really had to fight you know i think she got a lot of no's before she got yeses mm -hmm. um and so just from a uh resiliency standpoint i just think it would be fascinating to to sit with her and hear her stories yeah she's an amazing woman what an amazing career that she's had yeah um could i cook dinner for you guys please okay well <laughs> get oprah on the phone i'm coming your way i'm coming to cleveland to cook dinner for you guys i don't know if oprah wants to come to cleveland but that would be fantastic <laughs> i mean who wouldn't want to come to cleveland not That's far cool. from the rock and roll hall of fame right we are not. I was there. I was there over the holidays, actually. <laughs> I would love to go. All right, Don. Well, thank you again for being on the podcast. It's been awesome. And have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Okay. Take care. So I know this is hard to believe, but I recently signed up for Medicare. Now, what about my Libre 2 system from Abbott? As my pharmacy was trying to figure it all out, all the complicated paperwork, I was getting a little frustrated, and quite honestly, so were they. So I called US Med to see if there was a better way. And guess what? There is. Their motto is better service, better care. It's what they call white glove service. And really, I was worn out by having to make multiple trips to the pharmacy only to discover the orders were not even ready. Long lines, or they would say, we need to call your doctor. We need to get confirmation for the refill. It went back and forth and back and forth. And after about two weeks of this, I absolutely had it. I would reach out to the pharmacy and they would say, the doc never called us back or they never follow, followed up. That's the thing I hated the most. Are you ready for US Med to always provide you 90 days worth of supplies with fast, free shipping? Yes, free shipping. 
Look, they carry everything from insulin pumps to diabetic testing supplies to the latest CGMs. The Freestyle Libre 2 and 3 and the Dexcom G6. You know my love for the Libre 2 system and US Med is the number one distributor for the Libre 2 systems nationwide. Look, if you're just starting with Medicare like me, US Med should be your very next call. They accept Medicare nationwide and a broad private insurance coverage with over 800, that's right, 800 private insurers, plus an A plus rating from the Better Business Bureau. If you're looking for supplies from everything from insulin pumps to diabetes testing supplies to the latest CGMs, and you're looking for better service, easier service, delivered right to your door, free shipping, US Med is who you should be getting a hold of. Dial this number right now. Well, why don't you wait till the podcast is over? 888 885 0 one, two, or simply go to usmed.com forward slash happy diabetic. Don't wait any longer. Oh, wait a second. I think that's my doorbell. I think that's US Med delivering my 90 day supply now. Call them or go to the website usmed.com forward slash happy diabetic now. Again, don't wait any longer. The Happy Diabetic does not provide medical advice. This podcast is offered only to provide general information regarding health, wellness, and nutrition. And the information in this podcast is really not intended to be a substitute for medical treatment performed by a health care professional. So, if you have questions, consult them before making any major changes to your diet or your eating or exercise lifestyle. I'm not a doctor or a certified educator. I'm a chef living with type 2 diabetes just like you. Although I have three children, Attila, Dracula, and Frankenstein, that makes me a psychiatrist of sorts. If you're loving what you hear in the kitchen, share this podcast with all your friends and family and anyone you know living with diabetes. Please leave a comment or feedback at Stitcher, Google Play, or Apple Podcasts, and head over to my website, happydiabetic.com, to hear the latest podcast episodes. Our podcast is sponsored by my friends at U.S. Med Supply. Our theme music by the Happy Diabetic Kitchen Band, and of course, our kitchen mascots, Scout and Tucker. This year, better than last year. This month, better than last month. This week, better than last week. And this day, better than yesterday. Thanks everyone for tuning in. And let me leave you with this thought. Mary Berry from the British Baking Show said, Cooking and baking is both physical and mental therapy. Right on, Mary. We love the British Baking Show at our house. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And remember this, no one loves you more than me. Have a great rest of your week. See you next time.